Welcome to Ladi and Margaret Van Bill Show. Bunny put a hole in the bin. The requirement for us is to be able to be printing while driving. Can you imagine being 20 and being able to do what Pavel can do? Uh. Did we tell you about all of these LEDs on the shelf? I mean, come on. Finally, it's time to install the madness nobody's ever done before. Built in 3D printer! Do you see the shelf on the top of the driver and passenger? We hate those plastic shelves that are originally in there. We again take a custom solution, whatever this needs, to make a nice enclosure for the 3D printer. Woo! Sort out the feed for the filament, and that wouldn't be a project if we don't have a temperature sensors and automatically controlled temperature in that enclosure. Stay tuned, don't leave the video, and you always help us leaving comments or like. Let's begin the build. Kind of even fits, but it doesn't really. I already see a few adjustments that I need to make in order to fit this in. I think we can make it work. Why would you ever install a 3D printer inside of a van? You're going camping, you're gonna be outside in the nature. Why would you be carrying a 3D printer? Come on, man, what's wrong with you? We're a little bit different campers. When we actually live in a camper van, we live in it for months. And we're not just hanging out on the beaches, we still love being active and productive. I keep developing projects that I don't have time to develop at a workshop. As an extra bonus, it's amazing we have a lot of 3D printed parts inside of a van and we can just swap them anytime for something more convenient or something improved. <laughs> we started it! We started it! Explain what we just decided. This is my limiter. That's the frame that we're not touching. But this whole thing is 3D printed on the wires. So I'm gonna take the screen with the controller out run it on a panel here so I can control from the bottom too yeah. and that gives me all of this extra space <laughs> which is also great because when you're sitting here and you look up you can see the full status of what's printing behind you how these ideas just happen when you're actually on the project themselves you can't think of something like that ahead that's of time. why we don't plan that much we only <laughs> plan functions and uh, things that need to be ordered but the rest goes Right here, right now. Pretty perfect. Here you go. Go. <laughs> you know what is confidence good? To make a quick decisions. Confidence speeds it up. And then every time you make a mistake, it's never your fault. Uh, yeah, because you blame me. You're distracting me. 
Money can you clean up a little bit? Small, small, yeah. small. This is so Clean up. What does it even require 3D printer to be in there? 3D printer needs to be enclosed to have consistent printing environment. The enclosure needs to be ventilated. We need to be storing filaments somewhere. It needs to be well attached so it doesn't jump out when we break hard. There's so many things. And as soon as we sort out what we want, how to actually execute these projects, that's when it becomes really complicated. Bunny put a hole in the van! Another hole in a van. <laughs> like it's not enough. Like we didn't have enough. That'll be great ventilation for the 3D printer. Oh, you don't want to breathe the melted plastic inside? No, I that don't. needs to get out! Imagine that the hot end of the 3D printer is 200 degrees and a bed where the print sits and prints on is around 90 degrees. So this is a big heating element, this whole 3D printer. That's why we need to make extra sure between a metal and a 3D printer is a nice insulation so we don't have a big difference in temperature and we don't have any condensation. And also, we don't want to overheat the 3D printer and burn the power source. Okay, looking in there. Steady. And if this goes lower, then it's then it's gonna be perfectly straight. Wow. So we need to keep this low. Naturally, there's a curve on this overhead unit, so Lottie had to do a lot of compensation along the base of the 3D printer to make sure it's completely level. I wouldn't even say level, I would more say power over the floor. It also needs to be locked in the place because the requirement for us is to be able to be printing while driving. I heard people saying online that you can level in a van because you're always on wheels, you're never straight. Well, when you actually level the floor, then you can level everything else. Really worked out pretty freaking well. <laughs> Look at that. That's exactly the same. Wow. This is such a guessing that if I didn't get those angles right and the door would be warped, there is nothing I would be able to do. It would always be sticking out at the top or bottom. That was interesting improvisation. This overhead space was amazing in our first van build. We kept the whole shelf open and then as we started using it, we actually additionally added dividers to keep everything more organized, otherwise it was just a mess. So now splitting this high one in half is not just functional, but also I think we're gonna have pretty well organized then. We have a nice lip, just to prevent some slipping away when accelerating, when going aggressively. 
And then look at that, we have a nice 45 degree angle for LED. Did we tell you about all of these LEDs on the shelf? Well, stay tuned because we're gonna be mounting them soon. Woo! One hole for intake, one hole for outtake. Boom, baby. Why would you guys decide to do all of these dividers and have all of these cubbies? This is actually gonna be the place where Lottie is keeping some of his clothes because our rationale is when you have two people who have their closets in the exact same space, when it's time to change or get ready for bed or anything, you're both fighting over the same spot to access your clothes. But this way, my closet will be over here so I can change over there and a lot of Lottie's closet will be here so he can change here and we can do it at the same time without bumping into each other. We knew since we installed the cameras that the switch for cameras and the Wi-Fi router is gonna be stored in this compartment box. This compartment unit needs to be accessible and needs to be ventilated so all these active devices don't overheat and don't fail. <laughs> the door that gets us to this compartment box is held on a 3D printed hinges and we also have the bracket with a magnet. So we're gonna just pull a strip of fabric down of the magnet, swivel us down on a hinge, do the maintenance, replace or check or restart and back on the magnet. So all of these things not time consuming, but it's always 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there to model and print. Doing all of this prototyping in a plywood stage is so important because I can drill holes, if I make a mistake I can glue those holes and everything is going to end up being hidden under the fabric. Hey Bunny, what can you tell us about your 3D printing experience and what filaments you use? Oh, there's a lot of things about 3D printing. I actually was approached by Prusa and I was just at the beginning of developing Cyberbike. So I modeled day and night, researched videos, how to do that. And now I feel really comfortable to be pulling anything pretty quickly. So this is a magnetic door with imprinted hinges. This is a cabinet maker joint that you essentially take these two parts, slide them into <laughs> each see. other. That is amazing that you are joining the 3d printing with like the old school wood joinery techniques i mean why would you change something which is tried and true for centuries i mainly use ptg filaments because they're just overall pretty easy practical hard high uh, resistance temperatures and for outside use i usually use uh, asa because it's a uv resistant and it's just uh, gonna last much longer outside The reason this needs to be able to flap down is so the 3D printer is really easy to remove, to do maintenance on, to deal with the spools, the filament. This will give everybody much easier access. 
Well, this driver's side shelf, we knew from the experience that this was the least used space because it was just so difficult to reach. It's this dark corner. So we only kept really passive boxes there. I'm so happy we were able to fit four filament spools in this single enclosure. They don't have to be stored anywhere else. I can just have them all in one box. They're gonna be nicely dry and I can be carrying with us all the colors we want. That means probably two filaments black, one orange and one teal. We're using this contact adhesive glue because we can be gluing anything together, especially for such a materials like fabric. It's so easy and it really hides a lot of crimes if you're not that experienced. We always, when we spray, turn on the fans in this barn to air it out quickly. It's not a health concern at all because it's commonly used in cabinet making and we all have it in our interiors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's a big pressurized tank. The super convenient thing is that you never have to clean your spray guns. This is always attached, so you just clean the nozzle and you can keep going. There's only two minutes technological break between applying the glue and gluing them together, so it evaporizes and hardens and becomes kind of a tacky. I know this from my cabinet making days. I used to glue veneers and laminate, fabric, all of that and I use it on a daily basis at the workshop, it's amazing. This level of sophistication seems to need more than two people. So we are bringing on board our apprentice puddle. You could actually notice Pavel in our first van build video where he was already helping us out. Pavel is now expanding his whole portfolio on a van building, postering, 3D modeling, and it's such an incredible help for me because now I can delegate much more and we can do so much more with the ease. We're working as a bigger team with Margaret and Pavel and three people seem to make a big difference. been sewn since the last video we made showing me so and I am terrified of messing this up now first time back uh, what the? okay okay now we remember muscle memories oh my God. it's not there yet nope you got it I know you got it <laughs> Oh, this was a really good question. Why do you invest so much money and effort in a second-hand van? Buying a new van is still double the price than buying a few years old. And to me, this slightly used van is better value than getting a new one because of that massive loss of money. We hope the van will last a decade at least, 
once it's kind of no longer viable, we either sell it or we could convert it into a stationary living space on this land, you know, build a covering around it so it can still be a tiny home on this tiny house homestead. Why don't you wait for electric one? Well, I thought about it a lot and I actually think electric doesn't mean better because for this particular purpose of us doing a 10 hour drive to quickly get to interesting location, spend there two weeks and quickly go back would mean pretty big hustle with charging. Such an easy transport would take two days because that amount of weight, three and a half ton, is a big, big drag. I think that would be for much smaller radius of exploring than this. This way you just stop for 10 minutes, get diesel and keep going. This time, in this case, I would give it to diesel still instead of electric van. Hi guys, good morning. It has been a multi-day upholstery mission because all of these panels are so complex and different that we have to make sure that there's room for everything. So look at that edging. For example, one side here, the other side here, shelf, hole for ventilation. It's a mission. You don't want to see screws anywhere. You don't want to be rough and screwing massive brackets. So I had to start 3D printing small little brackets that are pretty unintrusive for the <laughs> to the eye. There is so many little pieces that I used only once, like these simple magnet holder brackets. There is a hinge I had to print three times to always adjust some measurements. There are these school holders because actually the enclosure is so small that I need to be able to slide them out. So I save this space to get the 3D printer out for maintenance. It's incredible. It's coming together. It's in here. Normally in a house you don't have this deep shelves, so it sometimes feels like a pit, how you can just So we know we need lights inside. Can you imagine being 20 and being able to do what Pavel can do? He is extending all of the wires for this display so it can be stored outside of the enclosure. And he did it in like 45 minutes.
that finally, finally the assembly. I have acrylic door, template, everything fits. Now we just position the hinges properly and we might be able to finish the enclosure. <laughs> 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 Did you know it's this easy to have a temperature controlled enclosure box? Same principle I'm using on the one we have in a workshop for three 3D printers. It's this simple device we list in our van parts list as well. And it's a digital thermostat relay. I can just set up desired temperature, for example, 34 degrees. So it turns the fans on. They air out the space and when the temperature reaches another threshold, which in this case would be maybe 30 degrees, it turns itself off. Then it heats up back to 34, turns it on, airs it out. You know, you can set whatever you want for a different filaments even. It's so cool and so easy. It's 12 watts, it works. So let's see how we did the uh, LEDs, hopefully they work. Yeah, that's gonna be great. And then we have this enclosure <laughs> in an enclosure. This is the 3D print so we can be closing and opening the vent because not always you want that access inside outside. Let's see the fan. How loud it is and how much it airs out. Okay. <laughs> that sounds like it could do something. That's great. Second fan. Nice, that works too. <laughs> so they're gonna be all wired on the same source, just one of them will be reversed so it sucks in, the other one sucks out. That's so easy. Table extended, that's great. We can have external display now. It's time! <laughs> what? Display extension, hopefully that's gonna work out well. And display is gonna be mounted right here on this panel. This is going to be like a charging dock and a, a laptop holder and a bunch of other stuff. But that's gonna be one of in a, one of the future videos. <laughs> Should we try turning the printer on? Yes. Yes, please. Ah! You <gasps> said <laughs> <laughs> I love the robotic sound inside of a van, that's inside cool. Inside of a camper van. A little CNC inside, that's so cool. That's absurd. Well, one thing I certainly need to do would be uh, the plastic tube going and feeding the filaments. So it actually goes around and goes straight to one of the spools. That is too much for publishing this video now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's later on. That's probably later this week. possible and it's finished now look at that this is ready this is a shelving it feels like ready to move in we just love uh, throwing out all of these ideas like imagination has no limit but then when it comes to reality to do it right it does take some time and I hope we will be able to publish these types of videos and create these types of sophisticated projects more regularly with Pavel. He the best! Wow. <laughs> we loved, loved, loved answering your questions during this video and we want to continue to do that. Let us know what you're interested in and uh, your questions because it helps us see what you are interested in and then we have a fun answering your questions and your concerns. 
Ooh, oh, one of the other questions was, are we still doing the apartment and the container home? The answer is yes. It's just kind of caught up with some approvals, which are not the most fun, but we are continuing to work our butts off on the land. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. See you next one. See the compilation of the land development. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, I have some chores to do, but I wanna do a power question and answer thing really quick. What do you do as a couple on like date nights or like to make time for each other? The time we have together is usually we'll go for a walk. So it's either in the mornings, in the afternoon, we'll take a break and go for a walk together, just around the village, through the fields and the forests, or evening walks, which are my favorite. <laughs> We want to get married and have kids. Absolutely. We want both of those things, which is a really big reason of why we're pushing it and being so intense with this land development and all of the building, because we want to have it all set up. So when we do have kids, we're present and traveling and a little bit more involved with them and not distracted by massive projects like this. Why are we staying in Europe? Was it easy for me to get a visa? We're staying in Europe because this is kind of the opportunity that was presented to us when COVID hit. And we both really do love establishing a base here. We ultimately want a base in the States as well, but that's a while out. I was able to get a spousal visa, which is a three year temporary residency visa that is only really works in Czech. I wouldn't be able to do the same thing in Italy or in Spain. We'd have to be engaged or married, but I have a residency for being his, uh, his girl, lady lover, partner, bang buddy, forever plus one. Obviously much easier for me to stay here with him than it would be for him to come over and try to be with me full time in the States. And even once we're married, it's going to be a pain. Dad, I just got here with the cement. This is gonna be a ramp. What do friends and family think about everything that we're doing? Super supportive, but sometimes I have a feeling that nobody gets how cool it's gonna be in the end. Only Lottie and I share the vision. So supportive, neighbors love that it's improving, but they have no idea how dope it's gonna be. On a more serious note, I've been dealing with two really aggressive stalkers lately, and it's been really difficult on the day-to-day -to, -day to put up with. Guys, this is aggressive. Okay, everybody's having fun. Okay. And I need this one. <laughs> 